Well, good morning, family. Good morning, friends. Believe that you are doing well. I pray God's richest blessings still on you and that his presence is still very tangible in your life and in your family and in your home and that you're carrying his anointing wherever you go. I want to read this morning before we pray just out of Philippians chapter 4 verses 1. It says, Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren and sistren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my beloved. Let your gentleness be known to all men, and the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report. If there is any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you have learnt and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. And I trust that this morning that you would be encouraged by this, that you would f take your focus off what's happening around the world right now and put it on Jesus. Meditate on those things that are praiseworthy. Meditate on those things that are of good report. And shut out all the negative. Shut out the reports that are in the world, in the social media right now. Don't meditate on those things because they will take you down the incorrect path. But meditate on what the Word of God says. Meditate on those things that are pure. Those things that are noble. Those things that are good. Allow the God of peace to surpass all understanding and let him guard your heart and mind in these moments, in these circumstances, in this situation. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that we can find encouragement. Thank you that we can find hope. Thank you that we can find exhortation Lord, in your word. God, I pray this morning that we would once again just take that time just to reflect and meditate in your word. I pray, God, that through this moment and through the season that we are faced with right now, that, God, we would guard our hearts, that we would watch what goes in through our filter systems, that we would stand fast, stand firm, and make sure that we are meditating on your word, meditating on those things that are of good report, that we would stand fast in this moment. God, I pray that out of our mouths and out of our hearts, Lord, would come the abundance of life as we speak, Lord, not to just our family, but Lord, as Lord, the world starts opening up again, that we would speak those things that bring life, that those things that bring hope, Lord, to a world that needs to know you personally, intimately, and understand that you are in control, that you have us in the palm of your hands, and that you're watching over us right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, this morning, last week, uh, we shared a little bit about the giants that we face in our personal lives. And this morning, I want to continue along those themes. And I want to share something that I believe happens not just in the book with the Israelites as they crossed over Jordan and they marched into Jericho and defeated Jericho. But it's something that happens in our lives as well. And it's the thing called complacency. It's the thing called routine. And often it happens in our lives. In our Christian walk, we find that this thing happens. And lockdown has once again proved to many people and has caused many people to reflect on their lives, to reflect on the routines, the habits, the complacencies that have crept in. And I want you to turn with me this morning to Joshua chapter 24. And I want to share these words with you. Because what happens in life, I believe, is, and, 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 and it's true for everyone, is that we, we cross over the Jordan River, we hear God's voice, we march around Jericho, Jericho falls, and then we think that that's the end. And what often happens is we have these incredible victories in our lives, and then we settle down, and we become complacent, we get into a routine, we get into habits that cause us to pull away from God. It causes us to distance ourselves from God and we get into these habits and routines that we are self-sustaining, that we can do by ourselves, and they form terrible habits that take some time to undo. And again, like I said, lockdown, I believe, has really shown this up in many people's lives, how we've had to really look at those things that are important to us, those things that really matter, and some of the routines and habits that we have formed in our lives needed to be undone. And what often happens, 
God and God in his word has said, go and possess the land. And when we march through over Jericho and the walls come crashing down, we have these incredible victories. And then we, like I said, we settle down. But God has called us to go and possess the land. God has called, gone and called, told us to go and take the enemy's territory. And we think by marching around Jericho, having this incredible victory, we've arrived. But that's not the, the case. And we often get tripped up in that because when we march around Jericho, we have this incredible victory. We settle down. We become complacent. And there are giants in the land that still need to be defeated. We need to go and possess the land. We need to allow God's kingdom to come. And in order for God's kingdom to come, there are going to be victories upon victories till ultimately we see him face to face one day as he arrives. But... We need to be aware of this thing called complacency. We need to be aware of this thing called habits that settle in our lives. And uh, this morning, I'm going to start a two-part series. We're going to look at some of the giants that are in the land that need to be defeated. And what often happens is we allow these giants to roam around the land and then eventually they take over. But God has called us and God has said to us, go and possess the land. Go and take my kingdom. Go and take the enemy's land. And go and allow my glory to settle here on earth. And it doesn't happen with just one victory. And so I want to encourage you this morning that God has said in his word in multiple times and in multiple areas of scripture to be standing our watch, to be aware, be alert, be on the guard. And, and that's what happens. And, and, and lockdown has caused us to look at those things. And uh, I want to share out of Joshua chapter 24. And then we'll look at some of the foreign idols and the giants that are in our land that we need to defeat. And as I said, I'll look at three of them this morning. And we'll look at the other four next week. And in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, halfway down, it says, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we've got to grab hold of that this morning. We've got to grab hold of that for our families, for our friends, for our neighborhood, for our city. And if you just move, go on a little bit further to verses uh, 23, Joshua says, Now therefore, he said, put away the foreign gods which are among you. And foreign gods creep in very easily. Foreign, foreign gods come in, in disguise. They come in various forms. And we need to be asking God, has foreign gods crept into my house? Have foreign gods crept into my home? And I believe through lockdown, a lot of that has happened. And God has challenged us in, in various facets and in various forms. It says, now therefore put away the foreign gods which are among you and incline your heart to the Lord God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and his voice we will bang. Incline your heart. And right now I, I have a sense and I just want to put it this warning is that there are many foreign gods trying to grab your attention right now. And even lockdown to some degree is causing because of the frustration, because of the irritation is causing us to not incline our heart towards God, but to incline our heart towards the enemy and frustration and irritation and depression and anxiety is creeping in. And those are not fruits from the father. Those are the fruits from the enemy. And I want to just encourage you, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Incline your heart to the Lord. Obey his voice right now. And be careful of the foreign gods, the foreign idols that are trying to creep in right now that we need to deal with, that we need to make sure are removed from the land. Because if we allow them to dwell in the land, they will take over and we'll find ourselves in the same place as we did just before lockdown. And I believe for many, that's not where God wants us and that's not God's best. So be careful of routine. Be careful of habit. Be careful of complacency setting, setting in because God doesn't just want Jericho. He wants us to take the, all of the er, enemy's territory. And so the first giant that I want to look at this morning is the giant of the Hittites. The Hittites, there were a lot of ites that dwelt in the promised land that needed to be dealt with. And the first one that I want to look at is the Hittites. And the Hittites speak of terror. It also speaks of fear, confusion, suspicion, distrust, and nightmares and discouragement. And we need to deal with that. We need to deal with the terror that sometimes creeps in our heart. And even right now, as people have struggled with finances, as businesses and the world economy is busy struggling right now, this thing of the Hittites, the, 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 the spirit of terror, the, the fear can creep in so easily. And discouragement and suspicion and distrust is certainly evident if you look around right now, as people are not sure what to do. And that's why I want to encourage you to keep your eyes focused on God. 
Meditate on those things that are trustworthy, of good report, like I shared it out of Philippians chapter 4. Because this enemy of the Hittites can creep in very easily where terror sets in. And especially in what's happening right now in the world, this thing can creep in very easily. And so I want you to put a guard. I want you to stand and watch and make sure that we defeat this giant. This giant doesn't belong in our homes. This giant doesn't belong in our land. And we need to make sure that it is removed. That fear, confusion, and confusion speaks of the suspicion and distrust and discouragement doesn't settle, settle in right now. But that we speak the word of God. That we encourage people that we allow God's hope to be poured out here on earth. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith with with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. We need to put up that shield of faith right now. We need to stand firm. Faith says, forsaking all, I take him. And we want to take Jesus this morning. We want to put Jesus up, up against the situation, up against what people are fearing right now, the terror that might be creeping in, not sure of what's going on, what's happening. I want to say, keep your eyes on Jesus. Put up that shield of faith right now and say, forsaking all right now, I take Jesus. I'm going to stand firm on his word. He is my source. He's my provider. He's my comforter. He is my all in all. And we want to make sure that this giant, the Hittites, doesn't creep in right now. Proverbs 29 verse 25 says, fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. I want to say when you trust in the Lord, you will be kept safe. You will stand. God will protect you. God will cause you to overcome. God will be there for you. He will carry you through whatever is happening right now in your life. But we must make sure that this giant of the Hittites is dealt with. And as and from, maybe it's creeping up on you. I want to say put up that shield of faith. Because these giants try and come into our promised land. They try and come into what God is trying to do. And we've got to stand our watch. We've got to put a guard up. We've got to set the watchman up so that we're seeing that this giant of the Hittites doesn't creep back in when we've defeated it. It stays defeated. It stays removed. And when it tries to come into our promised land, it's removed quickly. We do not allow a place for it in the promised land, in the things that God has for us. And so the first giant is that of the Hittites, which speaks of terror. The second giant that I want to look at this morning is that of the Gergeshites, marmalade, the Gergeshites. Lots of ites here in the land of promises. And the Gergeshites speak of compromise. It's surrendering your principles and standards and returning to your old ways. And I'm very mindful right now and very aware that God, through this lockdown period, through this process of what, we, what has happened, is certainly not wanting us to return back to our old ways. But people are very fond of their old ways. People are very fond of the familiar. People are very fond of their routines. And even as you watch social media now and all the things that are taking place, everyone wants to get back to the way it was. That's the giant of the Gergesites. Returning back to our old ways returning back to compromise and God has challenged us in a number of areas through this time and we must not compromise on that which God has revealed to us, God has shown us and we must not return to our old ways. God has got a better plan. God has caused us to cross the Jordan, march around Jericho, allow the walls to fall down, deal with those issues in our lives and we can't now say, God, I want to go back to the way it was. No, God has got something better for us. God has got something much, much more for us. If we rely on him, if our eyes are focused on him, if we give him our time, if we give him our attention, if we give him our all, that's what he's looking for. That is what we've been sharing, that God is seeking our face. God is seeking our time. God is seeking our intimacy. We cannot go back to the way that things were, where we were so busy, where our routines took over our lives, where we were comfortable in controlling our life, we've got to get out of control and allow God to control it. And that is the giant of the Gergeshites, which speaks of compromise. God wants us to walk in his ways. God wants to walk us to walk in his promises. God wants us to take his blessings wherever we go. It's going back to doing it in a way you're comfortable with. Right now, we've been uncomfortable. Why do we want to go back to comfortable? God has got something much, much more for us. And in Luke 9 verse 62, it says, And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. We cannot return to old ways. Once we've crossed the Jordan, 
Once we've crossed into the promised land, once we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we cannot go back. We cannot compromise on what the word of God says. But we've got to press into that which God has shown to us right now. God has been showing us through this time. And we've got to make sure that our, our face is turned towards him, that we're focused on him, that we're applying his word, that we're spreading his word, that we're bringing hope. And that we are showing others, discipling others, discipling nations in the, the word of God, in the relationship that God wants to have with us, his people, the chosen, his chosen ones. And God wants that for everyone. And so through this time, we've got to make sure that we do not compromise. We do not return back to our old ways, but that we carry on marching, that we carry on taking territory, that we allow God's glory to dis be displayed here on earth as it is in heaven. And that's the command. Go and possess. Be fruitful and multiply. It's taking God into our nation, into our neighborhoods, into the, our workplaces, into every area and every facet of our lives that we do not return back to our old ways. We do not compromise. We don't allow the giant of the Gergesites to come back in to our promised land and settle for second best once again. But we actually carry on pursuing all that God has for us. And third and last for this morning is the giant of the Amorites. And the Amorite speaks of arrogant, proud, proud and boastful in their speech where we are judgmental towards others. And this giant creeps in very easily and very quickly. And we've got to make sure that the spirit of the Amorites or this giant of the Amorites doesn't creep in to our promised land and that we actually deal with it. And if this giant is in your territory, in your land, in your neighborhood, in your city, we've got to deal with it. We've got to put a guard on our hearts. We've got to allow what we watch to, and we've got to watch what we listen to. And we allow what comes in through our filter systems to settle in our heart because that causes judgment. That causes arrogance to settle in. That causes us to become pr prideful and boastful through our speech. And we think we're it. We've got the answer. We're it all. And like we heard last week and like I've been sharing with you, we've been called to serve. We've got to humble ourselves under the hand of God and allow God to do the work. And we're here to serve. And so when this giant, giant creeps in, Pride creeps in as well. And we've got to make sure that that doesn't happen in our lives. And um, it is the modern day Pharisees where titles and positions of power are important. And that is contrary to God's word. Where God has called us to serve. We're not here to look for titles and positions of power. We're not here to be boastful and prideful in our strength. But we're here to make the name of Jesus pr proud, lifted high, be, be made known here on earth and that is our us taking the glory of god here into earth turn with me to proverbs 18 verse 21 it's a well-known scripture proverbs 18 verse 21 it says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit and so we've got to be careful what we're saying, especially right now. We've got to be careful that we don't think we've got all the answers. We've got to be careful that we're not speaking judgment and ill against anyone, including our government. We've got to make sure that we are guarding our tongue. We've got to be careful of what we're allowing into and settle in our hearts. Because out of our hearts flow the issues of life and we speak the issues of life. And so we've got to make sure that we don't allow the negativity to settle in our hearts. We've got to put a guard on our hearts. And then turn with me lastly to James chapter 3. And we'll end with that this morning. James chapter 3. James chapter 3 verse 8 says, But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing, my brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree from my brethren bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you are bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. 
For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, willing to heal, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So let me encourage you, put a guard up, watch what's happening, what's happening around about you. Make sure that these three giants, the Hittites, which speaks of terror, fear, confusion, discouragement. The Girgashites, which speaks of compromise. And the Amorites, which speaks of arrogance. Make sure that these giants are not on your land. And if they are in your land, speak God's word over them and tell them to go. And allow God to deal with these giants in your land. Allow God, through his spirit, to, be, to help you deal with the giants that are in the land so that they will be once and for all dwelt, dealt with. And then put up the God, put up the shield of faith that you may withstand the fiery darts of the enemy. And right now, with all that's going on, be careful of what proceeds from your mouth. I really want to encourage you to put a God over your heart. Be careful of what you're reading in the, in the media. Be careful of what is being said to you through social media, through friends, through all the publicities that's going on right now. Put a God on your heart and be careful and put a God on your mouth because we want to speak truth. We want to speak the truth of God in love and allow God's hope to fill this earth. We do not want to go back to our old ways. We do not want to compromise. We do not want to get despondent or discouraged right now, but we want to allow God's truth, God's spirit to be displayed here on earth. We want God's spirit to hover over the earth to allow his glory to be manifest. And so be careful of what you say, be careful of what you speak, because it has great power. So Father, thank you this morning for your word. Thank you for your encouragement that's found in your word. God, I pray that we would take to heart and look personally, inwardly, Lord, if these giants are dwelling in our lives, and if they are dwelling in our lives, God, we want to repent, we want to return, we want your spirit to help us deal with these issues in our life, that we may, be, we may fully represent the Father here on earth right now. And God, I pray that your glory would be displayed here on earth as it is in heaven, as your sons and daughters speak truth, speak life, speak love, Lord, into our neighborhoods, into our cities, into the marketplace, into our nation right now. God, we need your love. We need your truth. We need your power to be displayed through sons and daughters who say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we will incline our hearts towards the Father and be obedient to your voice. And God, that's what we're looking for as we continue to take land for the King and the Kingdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless. Have an incredible week. Amen.